Hey everyone, Pastor Brendan Witten here, back with you for another Faith Fuel video devotional. If you're joining us live, good morning. It is good to see you again, and it's just been good to be together this whole week talking about evangelism and sharing our faith with others. Uh, make sure if you're tuning in live, give a, a shout out in the comments, let people know you're there. We love the community that's forming around this. But also, if you're tuning in on demand, you're watching this at another time, another date. Uh, maybe you've just stumbled on this video somewhere on the internet. Thank you so much for joining us as well too. We're really excited and we just try and bring quality word every single day, five days a week, just to help you grow in your walk with God. This is not meant to replace your entire devotional life, but it is meant to supplement your devotional life. And so as I said, we've been talking about sharing our faith and we've been talking about reaching people with the good news of Jesus and how we can grow. And so we've covered a lot of territory this week. We've kind of given some basic definitions. We've looked at some basic scriptures. We've talked about eight principles for biblical evangelism. And, and yesterday we, we spent some time in Peter where we were really focusing on honoring the Christ and the Lord is holy and being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks for the reason that the hope that's in us, but do it with gentleness and respect. And so today I wanted to continue and just in a closing lesson, I wanted to talk with you even a little bit more practically about what, you know, does the Bible say are, are, are things that we can do so we can be more intentional, so we can be more effective in sharing our faith, so we can do it on purpose and what can we do? Because what I found, where I found is where a lot of us get stuck. I know I've been stuck there many times is we know we're supposed to do it. We want to do it, but we feel very like we struggle. We feel very incompetent. So we really have a hard time with doing it. We have a hard time with, you know, kind of getting it together. And, and so I want to just finish off this week with just talking about what are some practical things we can do uh, if we're going to share our faith on purpose. What are some practical things that we can do if we want to be people or intentional? We want to be a church family, a church community that are intentional about evangelism and sharing our faith. And so let's dig in here a little bit. I want to actually go to Luke chapter 10, 1 to 11. And so this is actually a passage where Jesus was sending his disciples out. So in the same way, he is sending us out the Great Commission. So much of what he said to them, I believe, would very much apply to and be helpful to us. So let's read Luke 10, 1 to 11. It says, In these things the Lord appointed 70 others also, and set them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. And then he said to them, The harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest field. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs among wolves. Carry neither money bag, knapsack, nor sandals, and greet no one along the road. But whatever house you enter, for say, Peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. And if not... It will return to you and remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give for the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house, whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you, heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out in the streets and say the very dust of your city, which clings to us, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Obviously, amazing passage. There's so many things. Again, the picture of this is Jesus is sending out his, his uh, 70 others. He's sending out his disciples, and he's sending them out into the harvest. And so what are some truths that if we're going to be people who are sharing our faith on purpose, people who are into you know, evangelism and, and really living this life, what are some things we can pull from this? Well, the first thing I notice is Jesus sent them out in twos. Now, this is a small point, but it's very important. Here's what I found is I'm much more effective in evangelism if I'm accountable to others about it. And I'm much more effective when I do it with others. Right. There's, there's a bit of a there's a courage that comes when you're part of a group. And so often we struggle, but we struggle because we're trying to do it just by ourselves. What if you had uh, some partners in righteousness, right? Not partners in crime, but partners in righteousness. You had some people that you committed together and said, we're going to grow in this. We're going to maybe, maybe, you know, you're listening and there's uh, other people are watching li with you. And you let's hold each other accountable. Today, I'm going to reach out to somebody with the love of God. Today, I'm going to pray. And we're going to share and we're going to pray for you. We're even going to go out together. Right? It's so much easier to go share and just to go out and do some gospel work with somebody else instead of trying to bear yourself. You can pray together. You can encourage each other. You can play off each other's strengths. You don't have to necessarily have all the answers. Right? You can go out together. I remember a funny story years ago. One of uh, two guys in our church got together and they were in a mall and they said, you know, we need to witness. We need to share our faith. 
And, and the other guy said, okay, let's do it. You know, they're kind of psyching themselves up. They're feeling kind of scared and intimidated. And the first guy said, look at that. There's that group of youth over there. Let's go talk to them all. Now, you? that's kind of scary. Let's go talk to a whole crowd. Right? The guy's like, okay. And the guy, first guy said, I will, I'll go first, and then you can go after me. He's like, okay. So they walk over to the group. And the first guy looks there and goes, hey, guys. And they all look at him. He goes, my friend wants to tell you something. Right? Now, you can imagine how the friend felt in that moment. That's obviously not a great model of how you need to work together. But you know what? Sometimes, straight up, you may need a friend who just kind of pushes you out there and says, come on, we're going to do this and go. So I love this. He sent them out in twos. We, need to, we are going to be more effective in evangelism if we do it in community as a church, but also are you going to be intentional about having partners in righteousness that you're going to work with? Furthermore, we see here that Jesus said to them, the harvest is truly great. One of the lies the devil wants us to buy into in this time is he wants us to buy into the lie that uh, people don't want to hear the gospel. People don't want to come to go to know Jesus. No one cares about this. Guys, it's not true, especially during COVID times. So many people's hearts are over the gospel. Now, does everybody want to hear the gospel? No. Is everyone in a place where they're ready? No. Are there going to be people who are going to kind of persecute you or put you down? Sure. But the harvest is great. Deny the lie, reject the lie that says that there's not people who want to come to Christ. Jesus said the harvest is plentiful. But what do you say though? The laborers are few, right? So that's why we're even doing this teaching this week. Will we be laborers who are going to do? What's a laborer? A laborer is someone who does work, right? Paul told Timothy, uh, in 1 Timothy, I believe it was, do the work of an evangelist. It's hard work. It's challenging, but it's worth it, right? It's worth it to do the work of an evangelist. And so he said, the harvest is so remember, let's let's remember, let's be in teams, let's be in community, let's remember that the harvest is great. People want to come to Christ, they just don't know it yet. But the challenge is with laborers. And then he also says, So pray the Lord of the harvest. Now I know the verse many of us know, but prayer is so important when it comes to evangelism and sharing our faith. We want to lay the groundwork in prayer before we go. So that means praying for people. That means maybe if you are going to go out and do some gospel work, pray together before you go. I remember my, my cousin is uh, part of YWAM. She's very involved in YWAM, uh, Alyssa. She's amazing. She shared at church once. I can't wait till we can get her back. And she's married now, so her husband too, and we can share together. But uh, one of the things I remember her telling me about was even in the journey of YWAM, because she's very involved in something called Fire Fragrance, where they do like prayer and worship, kind of like 24-7. And, and one of the things that YWAM did about, I think, 10, 15 years ago now is they made a decision that all their bases, all their mission bases around the world, they're going to create prayer rooms and prayer furnaces where there's going to be ongoing worship and prayer. And every time they sent out teams to evangelize, they were going to have teams that were praying and worship. And when they did this, they saw their fruit go through the roof. They saw it incredibly explode. I mean, it's, it's just an incredible testimony. But what's happening? Because they're doing the work in prayer, but then they're also doing the work. Now, if you just pray and nobody goes, you're not going to see a lot of gospel work done. But if you also try and go, but there's no prayer back up, you're going to run into problems as well. So we want to make sure that we're praying. Uh, you know, every day, just pray for someone to come to know Christ. Have people you pray for by name, but then also let's commit to go. Now, the last thing I want us to see from this passage, because we're bringing things to a close, was the part where he said, and whenever you enter a house, first says, peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you. So there's a really important principle here that if we get, will really help us in sharing our faith. We don't need to share our faith with everyone. Now, do we, should we want everyone to come to Christ? Yes. Am I saying that we should purposely ignore or, you know, just avoid people? No, but here's what I'm saying. We can get really stressed if we take the weight of the world on our shoulders. And so many people are like, oh, in Toronto, how many people don't know Christ? And I've got to win them all. No, no. Here's what we need to do. We need to be spirit-led and spirit-empowered. We need to do what the Holy Spirit tells us to say. But here's what I'm saying. Just, you, you go now. He says, you go in a house and, and you say, peace on this house. And, and, and part of this was, would they welcome you? If there's a son of peace there, I'll say a son or a daughter of peace, will they welcome you? And if they welcome you, then great. If they don't, you go a little further. Jesus said, just keep moving. And so what we want to do is we want evangelism to be part of our everyday life. You know, want to be in community. We want to be praying. We want to believe the harvest is great. But then we just need to look for open doors that the Holy Spirit gives us with people. And so we need to look for open doors and open opportunities. And you know what? If you try and talk to somebody and they just don't seem open, that's okay. Just keep going. Don't feel like you have to force it. Don't feel like you have to keep trying unless the Holy Spirit gives you an assignment for that person. But just look for people. Around. So often I'll go out and I'll just ask people, hey, do you need prayer? And sometimes that opens amazing conversations. I find a, a son or a daughter of peace. Other times the person looks at me and goes, no, I don't. 
and I can tell they're very close and very hard. So I'm not going to try and keep pushing it. I'll just say, okay, God bless you, right? I'm looking for sons and daughters of peace, people who God is working their lives are already open. When you get this, it takes all the pressure off of feeling like you have to get it with everybody. You have to get through the entire gospel presentation. No, trust God that he is working in people's lives. The harvest is plentiful. What we need to learn to do is we just, throughout our daily lives, you know, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Part of the context of verse is as you go in the world, preach the gospel. Just as you go to work, as you go to school, as you go wherever you're going, be open to what Holy Spirit's doing. Look for opportunities. If somebody's open, share with them. If somebody's not open, pray for them. Bless them, right? There's, there's moments where God will tell you, no, this person needs to hear it now. They're, they're, yeah, so listen to the Holy Spirit. But for the most part, just let be, be released of pressure and stress that comes. Just recognize God's work in people's lives. And my job is to love Jesus, love people, follow the Holy Spirit. And then when the Holy Spirit shows me people that are open to take that opportunity and to eat with them, drink with them, pray for them and declare the kingdom of God. Amen. And so just hopefully that really blesses and encourages you. It's been great this week to talk about. Obviously, there's so much more that we can cover. But, but again, can, can I just encourage you as we go? Can we do this? Can we, like, if you haven't yet this week, I want to challenge you. Go find a son or daughter of peace over the next several days. Be open to, the, like, love God, love people, be open to the Spirit, but step out. Take a step of faith. Take that risk to reach somebody with the good news of Jesus. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, God bless you guys. This was so good. Let me pray for you one last time in this segment. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this opportunity we've had to go into your word. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity we've had to, to grow this week in evangelism, to grow and share in our faith. And I pray for every one of us, myself included. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will give us a fresh power, that we will listen to your leading. And even as we talked about today, we'll recognize that the harvest is great. The workers are few. So we'll commit to be workers. We'll commit to be prayers. And that we will not feel this pressure to like force it and make it happen. We'll just look for the sons and daughters of peace that you are opening doors within their lives and just see what you are going to do. And so we thank you for so We love you in Jesus' name. And everyone agreed said, amen. All right. Well, it's been awesome to be together. God bless you guys. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to our channel. Again, if this has impacted you and touched your life, would you mind sharing it with somebody? We want to just share, and, and it's amazing how things can go viral or go organically and touch the lives of people. And so, God bless you, love you, and it's just great to have you join us for Faithful Video Devotionals. We're going to be back again next week with even more great teaching and great discussion of the Word of God. God bless.